back out Ooh. yet again um, had a week off last week went to see the early purple live mint remember the Wylam brewery <laughs> May the 4th anyway I've just come for a relatively local camp in the Cheviots not big high Cheviots just um Oh, it's starting to rain. Just a little, little low hill. So I've got a mile. Uh, I think it's about two and a half mile walk. Oh, I can't believe it's starting to rain. I have to put my coat on. Oh, oh. I right, saw so only a couple of miles in. Um, because I've got to go to work tomorrow, Sunday. Nightmare. Uh, work is so busy. Just not been getting uh, anything camping video related done stowed off anyway I'm gonna stop put my coat on and continue bloody weather there's no rain forecast there's no rain there's no wind forecast so watch it be raining and dead windy Well, that's originally where I was going to pitch, but there's a big flock of cows there, and they look particularly angry. And on top of the hill, there's loads of uh, well, what the cows leave behind. What's brown and comes steaming out of cows, the Isle of Wight ferry. <laughs> God, honestly, 1978, I first heard that. Anyway, I'm gonna go on to a different hill. Cochrane Hill, I think it's called. Something like that. I've been here before and there was, uh, I was a bit underwhelmed by the top. But I don't wanna, oh look. There's a rabbit bouncing up there, you'll be able to see it. A big thing, March Hare. So, I can't be really bothered to walk to that one over there and it'll be too windy because the wind was picking up there straight away as soon as I stopped the wind started and them cows now they might wander up in the hill in the middle of the night you know what I mean you don't want your tent tramp all day remember the last time I was out in this tent and the guy line snapped could have been a rogue sheep although I didn't see any up there it's still a mystery that like anyway cracking on this path is terrible. Here we are, all set up in amongst the cow pats. They're over there, like right over there. So if I come up here, I'll just scare them off. I don't fear them, I just fear what they can do to the tent. This is there's a tip there, like if there's cows in a um, public access land, they're not dangerous. Just curious when they come up to you, they just want to know what you're doing. What you doing? But there we go, anyway. All set up nice. I've got the, the lot of down because it's going to get cold tonight. Apparently, it's going to get down to zero. So, I mean, condensation with the temperature being what it is now. And if it drops to zero, that'll be just condensation. That'll be the same. Any tent. Oh, he just came out of anywhere. Anyway, those are rolling Cheviot Hills over here. Uh, that's the, the east coast is that way. Can't, I thought you could see the east. Is it? Really? Or is it? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything. 
All I know is I'm gonna get in and have a cup of tea because I'm freezing. My hands are cold. Look how cold they are. What's he gonna do that? So there I am. Just sat the fool on the hill. This is Cochrane Pike, it's called. I found out. I looked on the map. Bizarrely, right? This character here has just been stood here for like the last 10 minutes. Just staring at us. There's no other cows around. I've just had the drone up. And this is the only cow. There's nothing else around. It's what the hell is going on. I think I'm in its place. What's the crack like? It's trying to menace me, you know. But I'll not be menaced. It's huge, it looks like it's pregnant. Look at its big belly sticking out. <laughs> it's just been stunned, it's never stopped, it's never moved. I thought it was a blooming. I thought it was a, a statue. How weird. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. Peculiar. Just don't want to trip it on my tent. Oh, hey. That's just turned really, really bitter cold. I've put my down jacket on, my gloves. It's freezing. Wind's nippy, see, the wind is bringing a nip. And I think there's, um, looking at the forecast, so there might be some sleet or snow. Certainly ice. Oh, I've got to get that. We're going to get that thing that happens every March, aren't we? Where the weather just turns Baltic for a couple of weeks. Anyway, I've had a nice cup of tea, warmed up. I'm just going to sit chill out for a bit now. I was making a move. It's bored. It's really cold. It's cold at the point where I've got my down coat on and I'm shivering. I've put another um, t shirt underneath as well. So, what's the answer? Have a beer. Yes. It's back in the shops. Good game. Bit of juicy. It's actually called the way of the Sufi. <laughs> it's not. Right, so I'm not, not going to knock on the can. Everybody's saying you should, you shouldn't, you should. I don't know. I don't ever do it, so. Ah, there we go. Right. Ah, oh, so. Ah, oh, it's lovely, man. It's nice and cold as well. Just the thing you need when you're feeling cold, and a really cold day is a, a nice cold beer. Should have another cup of tea. Oh, oh it's got not much to say. There's not much to do. It's basically just me getting away. I've never been out for, uh, well, the last one I thought was Rob. Um, he's busy this week. And I think he's busy for the next two weeks. So I think it's going to be Easter before I'm back out with him. We've planned a four day trip. So that should be all right. Four day trip in the lakes. Um, three or four days, I'm not sure how many days you get off. You get four days off Easter, but. With the weekend, yeah, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Ah, so it'll be three days. I think I'm, I'll be heading over on the Thursday night. I'm going to start a new channel. I'm going to start a new channel. I haven't done it yet, but what I've done is I've bought a van. I was out, out in the car at Christmas, right? And I was sleeping in the back of the car and I couldn't move. I could not move. I had nowhere to put anything. Things were just falling on top of us. Every time I sat up, banged my head. You know, I can't stretch out fully in the car. I mean, it was, don't get us wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. But it's just, I don't know, I needed a bit more space. So I got a van. Um, and I was watching Bushman's video and he says, oh yeah, so I've bought a van. I'm like, what? So people are gonna think I've copied him, but no, I had bought that van before I watched his video, so I haven't copied it. No, it's that. I've spoke to him about it. 
Oh, but yeah. So it's a Fiat Doblo, 2019. So it's only four years old. It hasn't got a very high mileage either. I got it for a bloody song, I got it for Nout. Obviously it wasn't for Nout, but it was cheap enough. So yeah, I'm gonna um I'm gonna convert it, but it's not gonna be one of them channels where it's all just me converting the camper van and paneling it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put the few odds and sods on there. Like if I go away in it, you know, and um like show before and after. So I'm, all I've gotta do is strip it out. I've got loads of work to do on it. I'm gonna strip it out, um and Insulate it and all that sound sound deaden the sides, insulate it, and put a vapor barrier up just to stop the condensation. Just so at least I can sleep in it, you know. And put like a little floor down. The rest will come later on. I'm happy just getting in the back with a blow-up mattress because there's loads of room. It's the maxi version. It's huge in the back. So I can stretch fully out, and I've still got about that much space at the top of my head. So that's good. So yeah. New camper van, but it's not the end of the camping. It's just going to be basically if I do get stuck or if I do fancy a night out. But mainly, I'll be using it for carting all my stuff around, like tents and all that. And then I can just, if the weather turns really bad, somewhere to keep, somewhere comfortable to keep. So, yeah, so I'm keeping my car, I'm not going to sell the car. Unless somebody wants to make us an offer they can't refuse. 117,000 miles. Just had a new timing belt done on it. Drives like new car now. It's unbelievable the difference that timing belt made. We did the water pump. I've always had it serviced. It's never failed an MOT. And it does 60 miles of the gallon. Make us an offer. It's covered in dents and bumps, but it still looks nice. I'll not sell it. Oh dear. This is my view anyway. I'm just sitting here. Really, really nice just to sit and chill out. Nothing to see. There's no discernible features. There's no amazing mountains. Well, I mean, the hills, if you want to count them, they are nice. I love a rolling hill. The cows are at a safe distance over there. So yeah, that's it. It's just chill time. Ooh, it's cold though. Old eagle in the sky Old eagle in the sky Load is coming and I don't know why Old eagle in the sky Spices first in the hot butter. Just turn this down a little bit. All right, chuck in the chili and the bay leaf. Put in the spices. Oh, duh. Look, there's um, 
what the hell are the cumin pods? Ah, oh, you stupid thing to do, right? You've got to give them a little bit of a uh, stir about for a, way, for a bit. 20 seconds, I think they say. Ah, just had a shout out of Stuart McCorney. I'll put that in. Andy Warden says, I heard you saying to the Hawk that Craig's listeners usually contact you from hot tubs or camper vans. Did I mention camper vans? Definitely hot tubs. I'm wild camping in the Cheviot Hills tonight. Very chilly. Doesn't feel like a kind of fun good sort of thing to be doing, Cheviot Hills, for wild camping. It must be cold. Very chilly. Just having a beer and getting the curry on. Excellent. How are you doing? Ah, presumably on little little primer stove curry. Oh, what an image. Um... <laughs> I have to show. I have to send them a picture of the finished result now. He's an outdoor person, Stuart McCorney. Done uh, him and Mark Radcliffe. <laughs> He's sitting in for Craig Charles tonight. Him and Mark Radcliffe do a lot of. Uh, they do a lot of walks, don't they? Did Adrian's, Adrian's wall walk not so long ago? Is it now the pubs? I like Stuart McCorney. I'm glad it's him sitting in. Ah, oh, but anyway, yeah. And then what we've got here is the the paste, the spice paste. So I'll just oh, open that. Anywho, Andy Ward has been back on again and says that was evening champagne king. Love come down. I think I said that. Tiny, pr he's, he's sending us, he's sending us pictures of his curry uh, in the Cheviots. Tiny primer stove, no. Big epic full-on chef kitchen, yes. That's a hell of a knife to have taken wild camping. It's like look at that knife. It's like sort of a Jamie Oliver style. Whatever you call it. Anyway, you seem to have got a whole system worked out there, and they hope it goes well. Um, let us know how it goes. I might have gone on about the size of the knife I've got out. It is so, this is like Andy's Wild Kitchen. And this is a kitchen knife, so, you know, that's legal. Let's see if we can get that in. I don't make them too much mess. You get them all out of your hands. That is spicy. Them spices. Oh, hot man, go. What the hell is in there? What is that? As always, I have my rubbish bag. Like the, the bin bag there. These are cheap from Morrison's, just get a roll of them. Just get a roll of them for your rubbish. It'd be great. Right, so we'll give this a step. <laughs> God, the chilli. <coughs> it's got the back of my throat. Jesus. Oh. Be heartburn. <laughs> what I've got here on the on the chopping board is the garlic cloves. So we're gonna just slice slice these up. Without taking my finger off. Hold on a minute. That's getting a bit. It's getting burnt, man. Oh, I just keep catching the back of my throat up. <laughs> wow, that is spicy. <laughs> I might not be able to eat this. Jesus. Get some garlic in. Let's get this sliced up. Let's speed this bit up. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> I might have too much garlic here, like, shit, bloody hell. Oh, I tell you what, I'm all right, Irene. Oh, no, it's really, it's catching the back of me, God. Oh. I'll come back, right? So here's the, uh... Had a coffin fit before that. Like. So here's the tandoori, no, the tikka paste. I mean, this is not like the chicken tikka you get in the shops. 
this is real. This is spicy, man. It's got a big full-on red chili in that. And cumin and all that stuff. So the next thing to go in is a chicken. The chicken. I haven't I've only got a few little uh I just got a a couple of chicken breasts from Morrison's and I chopped one I chopped one and a half. There's one and a half chicken breasts in there. Simply because like yeah, the pan's not big enough to take it off. I've got to put rice in, yeah? I've got peppers and mushrooms to go in and rice. So I'm going to let that... I'm going to let that brown off. Or cook, whatever. And then get the vegetables in. I've got mushrooms and peppers to go in. Which I've already chopped up. And prepared there in the house. And then... I'm just going to keep it on the move. Looking good. Looking good. Smells lovely. Here we are then, we've got, the, uh, we've got the green peppers in and the mushrooms and the chicken, the chicken browned off, it's just cooking through now you've got to be careful with chicken on there you've got to be very careful when you're cooking chicken and not get, like if you get it on your hands you've got to wash it off I didn't get it on my hands, that's why I put it in the, um, the Ziploc bag, just tipped it out because I haven't got any hand wipes it out oh actually I've got the Andrix bum wipes, I could have used them. But yeah, be careful when you're uh, doing cooked food with raw, especially raw chicken. It's nasty, man, it can get nasty. You need more than Andrix wipes for that. You need half a ton of Imodium. Every half an hour. So yep, yeah, just let that cook through there. <laughs> Book a tea of the MGs. Probably get done for copyright because it was that good. Right, let's let this go. I just want to say one thing, right? That that is beautiful. That is really nice. It smells lovely, and I've had a little taste. And it's lovely. I'm just letting the uh, I'm just letting the mushrooms and the vegetable and the chicken cook through as well, of course. And have a can of faith, you know. As George Michael once said, careless whisper. What? No, Club Tropicana. Do the jitterbug. And that's it. I just let that cook through now. And I've got some lime and coriander basmati rice, bastard. And it's made with kefir limes. Whatever the hell that means. So what I'll do is pour that in, or half of it, probably take half home. Half of that in and then you've got Korean rice, very nice. And it's not racist to do an Indian accent, because I do I do Scottish accents, American accents, um you know, Welsh accents, Irish accents. And what's wrong with doing an Indian accent? As long as you're not ripping the Mickey, you know what I mean? It's it's fine. I might leave this bit out. <laughs> so there we go, folks. I put the rice in. Rice, um, the basmati rice with coriander. You could not taste the coriander. And it's lovely. The lime and the coriander. So it's all cooked through. And that is really nice. That's spicy as hell. But I love it. Mmm. Really good. So I'm going to have this have that and then we'll come back and we'll see what else is about it's actually not that cold now it's warmed a little bit because the wind has stopped the wind is gone this is turning out to be a very very nice night it's just a shame the uh, i haven't got the aurora action that i had the other night that would have been the topping absolutely the greatest thing 
ever. It really is. Absolutely love it. We've got a lantern. It's called the Max Lantern, right? So you got to watch this. I mean, it is quite. It is quite big and chunky. You shouldn't really be taking this on a wild camp. But I did because that's what I do. So lots of functions. It's got like this retro look in the cage. It feels nice and chunky. It's all. It's all metal like. I think that's a, a plastic top. So that top comes off there and you put, it's got a mark for a hundred mils of water. Strange when you think about it, a lantern, you're putting water on it, but there's a reason, right? And you're gonna see this in a minute. So you put a hundred mils of water in there. Obviously make sure you don't spill it or knock it about. It's got like a little handle there. There's a little uh, metal ring comes on the bottom as well. To keep it off the ground, I forgot to bring that, didn't I? I left it in the house. So you've got the the controls here. You press that on off, and then it's got this bonfire mode, which we'll get to. You can see it there, right? So it's a double double click to turn it on. So I'll turn the um, I'll turn this light off. We'll go dark for a second, and then we'll come in with the double click. Double click to turn on. Get the nice orange glow there, look at that. And then click it again. And it's a nice white and orange. Click it again. That's a lovely bright light. That is bright light, that. That lights up the whole place. Look at this. That's my foot. <laughs> but yeah, double click. But the piece of resistance, right? So if you just turn it off. Put it on orange. Ugh, double click it. Right, and then you turn that dial, which says, hold on, the bonfire dial, right? So you turn it on one, and you can hear it, and then it starts smoking. Turn that on, and you get the, you get the full effect. Oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> I mean, how nice is that? <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm not just saying it. I absolutely love that. I seen um, Chris from MCM Outdoors and I thought, I need one of them. <laughs> so yeah, so you just turn it back, turn it back and it knocks the, uh, the orange off and then you've got this... Uh, See, apparently you can put essential oils in there. So, I mean, if you're in your tent, right, and you want a good night's sleep, put some lavender essential oil in. Lavender will help you get a good... It turns you off to sleep, doesn't it? But isn't that great? Isn't that the best thing? Ever. Like, ever. It's just water. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> ah. It's the best thing ever. It's a Kickstarter campaign, so these are not available, but you can get the pre-orders in. I'll put the links in. <clears throat> They're definitely worth having. If you go on a car camp, if you're a camper van, or with you, if you're with the kids in a big tent, you know what I mean? Such fun. Just so nice, just so relaxing. I'm just lying here with that on, with the radio playing and that, doing that. And it's just the best thing. I'm so chilled out. It's made my night that like I cooked my tea beside the um the bright light. Look how bright it is, it's lovely. It's a uh what do you call it? The C type charger in the back there. You just you just charge it up in the back. Make sure all the water's off. Type C charger and it also if you plug your phone in, it'll charge your phone. It's like a power bank as well. If it's fully charged, it depends how how desperate you need to charge. But yep, yeah, I'm having that like, right? Double click. In fact, you don't need to just leave it on like that. That's the bonfire mode. You see why they call it bonfire? It's a shame it doesn't throw out heat because I'm freezing. Actually, sitting. Nah, nah, it's not. It's in the imagination. But yeah, 
Get yourself one of them. That is amazing. I love that. Normally I wouldn't I wouldn't think about, you know, I'd be like, ah, what are you talking about? But that is so good. <laughs> I'm like a big kid. I love things like that. Anyway, yes, flex tail. Max Lantern. Or whatever it's called. Oh, knocked the camera flying. Right, good one. Good review, isn't it? Knocking the camera flying. Just thought I'd throw that in there anyway. We're just chilling out with the radio. And the darkness is no northern lights. That's it. That's my view there. That's what I can see, is what you can see now. Oh, so here we are. We find ourselves in the tent with the bonfire lantern on. Look at the, look at the ambience. Look at this one. I love this. I really do. Do you know what? It doesn't matter if you don't buy one. I don't care. I've got one and I love it. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> Kickstarter, so not available, but it will be. Oh, I'm always promoting stuff, aren't I? I always promote stuff that I like, you know, like like a drone. I was looking at getting a drone, a Mavic. And then that Rugo got in touch and they said, do you want a, bar do you want a drone? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Why not? Well, I've tried it and see. We'll see what it's like. We'll see the footage. I've got. I've got a bit of footage. I'll edit together. I mean, I'm just in the beginner stage, so it's not going to be great, you know. But it's not going to fly through the tent or out. Not at the minute. Plus, when I set it up, the flipping wind just picked up. Now it's gone. It's completely dead. But it's dark. Anyway, that curry was lovely. Really nice. Um, any new subscribers? I've noticed quite a few subscribers like lately. So. Welcome along to the channel. Hope you enjoy the madness. Don't take it too seriously. I mean, I do know what I'm doing. I just pretend that I don't. <laughs> I've never, I've never been in any peril. I've never had any. I've had a couple of disasters, but nothing that wasn't to blame the weather for. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. So what I'm going to do now is finish these beers. Oh, I'll finish off listening to Stuart McCorney, has been really good. Playing a lot of funk and soul. It's it's basically the same show, but just a different presenter. And that's about it, really. I've got nothing else to say. Other than... We'll see you later. I don't think there's going to be any clear skies, stars or anything. I might put the camera out just in case because there's no rain forecast so I might stick it at the door but I wouldn't be surprised there's no night lapse in this video because it's looking very thick the cloud yeah not to worry anyway right we'll see you later I'm gonna finish these beers morning camp fans just in time for the kettle boiling here we go done Nice cup of tea. Let's see if I can do this one hand, right? This could end badly. No, I can't. That was going to end terribly badly. Let's just get that off. That's it. I wasn't a fan of this thing at first, but I've sussed it out now. And it's quite good. I took about... Right. I don't even think it took a minute. Uh, just over a minute, probably. There's not much water in. It's not a full pot. But it's fast, and it's just what you need. I'm just uh, clearing up. That's that thing. Must be some sort of little bizarre motor thing in there, which makes the steam come out. It hardly used any water, so I think 100 mil would last quite a long time. It's quite bulky for a wild camp. But you know what I'm like, I carry all kinds. I don't mind. I can't do anything with one hand. Nothing. You just line it up there. Right, that's the... There's like a little cutout thing there. Oh, that's it. And then it just locks on. No, that didn't. <laughs> I can't do it. 
I forgot how to do it. I'm on the other side. I need two hands. I'm needing two hands. No sunrise. Night sky wasn't great. I think the settings are on, right on this. I don't know. I might have, I might have changed them. I'll have a look at it on the big screen, see what it's like. But yeah, I'm just going to tidy up, clear up. And uh, get myself away. Unfortunately, I've got to go to work. Which is a nightmare. And then I'll start processing a few videos. I think there's a couple that come out. There's one of the drone. This one. And then another little short one. After that, that's about it. So, we'll see you when we're off. The wind's really picked up anyway, by the way. I don't know where that's come from. There we go. All done and dusted. This is where I was here. I've not left any pegs or nothing. No scraps, now. Zero zip, zilch, nothing. So I'm heading back to towards the cows of Terra. Well, I'm not scared of them though. Forget that. Um, yeah, and then just down around down to the car. It's about two miles, I think. Not really that far. It's not tough terrain either. It's a bit muddy the path. But I found out why yesterday all these blooming quad bikes came over. There was loads of, and a lot of horses. You know the uh, the fox hunt. But they assured me that all they do is they chase a, um, a scented thing somebody drives in front. Anyway, I'll, there might be a funny little edit there. And the battery just died on us again. To be fair, I have used that same battery the whole trip. And it just went there. So as, as I was saying, the uh, fox hunters, they chase a quad bike with a scented cloth or tail or whatever. I don't know what it is. That's what they were telling us anyway, whether or not that's right. <laughs> it's up to them in their land. But no, they were, they were quite they were quite nice. All waving and saying hello. I'm sat there in my tent. So never got moved on. Didn't even bother. One of them pulled up, asked us why I did it. And I just told him, because of the solitude. Then proceeded to pull a bottle of port out of his quad. Offered me a nip. <laughs> So all in all, quite pleasant. Good little camp. Cows are gathering like, ready to attack. But I don't think they realise who I am and what I can, what I'm capable of. So you know, they might be, might be on the news. So we're going to say throw on out. I've waffled on enough, talked enough rubbish. And that was the camp on Cochrane Pike. So I've camped on that one, I've camped on that one, and now on that one up there. So I think the next target will be over there. That looks a good spot. Don't know when that will be though. Right, we'll see you on the next one. I can't speak, I can't speak. Look at them. <laughs> they just look at you. If you're daft, which you probably am. There's more here. Farmers like, ah, they're not bother you. They're just nosy. And they, and they weigh half a ton. And they've got teeth, sharp teeth and claws. Yeah. Earp. Ear, you don't be running away. It's meant to be me running away. See? They're terrified of us. Well, it's because they know. They know. Right, onwards.